One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> to you today with another banjo lesson. This time we're going to work on boil them cabbage down up the neck. So we're going to take kind of a, a basic beginner solo that we know down the neck and work on creating a new up the neck version. So this is really great practice. One, I just building more solos to the same song. The other thing this is great practice for is your fretboard knowledge. So knowing where notes are up the neck and where those notes are down the neck and making that connection in your brain is really important. So I've got six solos for this song. It's, it's a pretty short song, so I'm gonna show you six different ways to play the melody up the neck. Beginners would, would benefit from this lesson on studying the positions that these solos are built out of, and intermediate players would benefit from this lesson by creating variations to the solos, working on adapting a down the neck version and an up the neck version into a single solo. That would also be great practice. So it's got a little bit of something for everyone in this lesson. All right, I'm gonna break down all six solos note for note and then show you some up the neck backup you can do for Boil Them Cabbage Down. And if you're watching the preview of this lesson, you can head over to my website, mikeheadingmusic.com and grab the full lesson. You'll get all the videos, all the tabs, and all the practice tracks that come with this lesson. All right, here's an up the neck version of Boil Them Cabbage Down in the key of G. All right, so let's start breaking down this up the neck version to boil them cabbage down. I'm just going to start with the most basic version. Let me play the first four measures and then we'll start breaking it down. Here we go. Do that a few more times. Start a little slower. Speed it up a little bit. Speed it up one more time. Okay, so our first version, we're basically gonna take the, the most simple version we played down the neck. notes up the neck so again our melody started down the neck with the open second string we're gonna find that note up an octave so it would be at the 12th fret on the second string and then we're gonna put and we're gonna use our middle finger of our left hand and we're gonna use our third finger up on the 12th fret of the first string and we're gonna play that exact same roll the forward roll thumb on the second string and then five two one five two one those are my strings T I M so that's what we're doing. We're just doing it up in this position. I'm just gonna loop measure one. And then my thumb's gonna come back down and it starts over. We're basically working out of this bar chord shape here at the 12th fret. The only reason I wouldn't recommend doing it with my first finger only, it might be easier at first. The problem with doing it with just the bar chord though is it's hard to go backwards. If I do it with these two fingers, I now can use my other fingers to play notes around those. If I do it this way, I'm pretty much trapped to only be able to go higher. If I, if I want to go back to lower notes, I have to flip my whole hand into a different position. So that's why I'd recommend using your second and third finger. Let's just practice that a few more times. Now for measure two, we're basically gonna take this C chord. We're gonna take those and each move them up to another octave, so it'd be at 13 and 14. So what I'd recommend is sliding your second finger up to thir the 13th fret, and then I'm gonna let my pinky take over. 
You could you could just keep your third finger down if you want to just stretch them out, but for me, I like to add my pinky for whatever reason. And we're gonna do that same roll. Let's practice that. Remember the melody's on the second string, so that's why I'm bringing my thumb down. It also helps pop out that first note. What I also want you to practice though is try starting with your index finger. That'd be one you'd want to be able to play both ways because depending on what you're doing on the measure right before that, a lot of times you're going to want to start it with your thumb, but there's also instances where you might want to start that measure with your index finger of your right hand. So make sure you're playing the timing the same, one, two, and three, and four, and. So there's still a pause on beat one. Another little tip there that I'm doing is I basically slide my second finger up. I get that one down because that's actually my first note of measure two. And then that gives me an extra second to get my pinky down. See how I'm... I basically slide that one really quickly forward, get that one down, and then my pinky can fall into place. Get real close to the frets. Also, make sure you're not bending the strings a little bit. That's it's easier to do up the neck. You know, if you're bending the string a little bit, it's gonna put it a little bit out of tune. So be careful there. Make sure you're not bending those notes. For measure three, we're gonna go back to that 12 and 12 position. So slide your second finger back down, put your third finger back down, and do that same roll. And then for measure four, we're gonna take, keep your third finger where it is. We're gonna put our first finger down on the 10th fret and do that same roll. That's like a D chord. We're basically just working out of this shape. The only reason we're not using our pinky there is because our third finger was already down on that note. So rather than quick flip and, and use your pinky, I just elected to keep that finger down. So let's practice three and four. So we got. Good one to practice your speed on. Okay, let's practice the first four measures. Think of these as positions. So we got G, C, G, D. Once you get these positions down, I'll show you some other rolls you can use using these same positions. So again, think of these as positions. We got our bar chord, which is our G. That's just like playing open, right? And then we've got our C, 13 and 14 which is like doing this. And then we've got our back to our, our G, and then our D is like playing it this way down here. And that's normally where we'd have to change strings. We're just keeping all those notes on the same string. Our melody, remember, is. So not a super interesting melody, but a good one to start with. And we're, we're just filling that up with the roll, remember. Five and six are the same. We start, go back up to our G, so put your second finger down. Your third finger can just stay in right where it is. Back to that same roll. Up to our C. Now we're gonna do a little ending lick. We're gonna slide back down to 12 and 12, and we're gonna play our thumb on the second string, and then thumb middle, fifth string, first string. So that's one, two, and. And then I'm going to bring my thumb down again to the second string, put my first finger down on the 10th fret, take my second finger off, play that, that's a D, and then do thumb middle again, and then down to the 8th eighth fret and ninth fret to this G chord. And I'm going to hit my index finger on the second string, and then I'm going to pinch. And at each, the end of each of these solos, there's the pinch. So you can always see the solo is eight bars long, and it always ends with a pinch. That's how you can tell the solo is ending. So the ending is. And you could hit this with your thumb too if you wanted to keep that thumb, um, thumb middle thing going. I like using my index for whatever reason. That just feels more comfortable for me. Right here. Okay, so let's play that whole first solo. Here we go.
again. So that's one time through the solo. We're using the same roll the whole time, that forward roll. The only time we're changing it is for that ending lick. Otherwise we're using the exact same roll the entire time. The forward roll kind of keeps the drive going, keeps that forward momentum going. So I like using that one. We're also using our thumb to pop out the melody notes, remember. 